Hey guys, before we jump into today's video, we are trying to hit 50,000 subscribers by the end of this year. So make sure and do us a huge favor, help us out, hit that subscribe, and we'll see you guys out on the trails. See, when we're brand new to off-roading or owning a true selectable four-wheel drive vehicle, naturally our instincts are to use four high. And maybe that's because four high works great on the road, highway, desert trails, or for service roads at speeds that are much faster than more than just a crawl. And we have just become accustomed to using four high. Or maybe we just rarely ever had to use four low. In fact, when I was just a young lad, long before I could even drive, the only time I ever saw anyone use four low is, well, when my dad was pulling his 30-foot cabin cruiser boat out of the water at the harbor, but besides that, four low was never really even a thing. It's often pretty rare to use anything else other than four low when we're off-roading. Even when I know we're about to hit some higher speed sections, the transfer case goes back into two-wheel drive. Being here in Wisconsin, about the only other time to use four high, well, it gets used during snowstorms, but I realized that using the four-wheel drive, regardless if it's four high or four low, is pretty situational. So then the question is, when and what types of different scenarios should we be using for low in the transfer case? Well, for starters, anytime there are obstacles like rock gardens or rock ledges, tree stumps or down logs, loose rocky terrain, or any of those types of obstacles where you'll need the utmost vehicle control combined with slower speeds. It's also important to make sure that before you even get to those types of obstacles, that your vehicle has already been shifted into four low. This way, you're not trying to shift the transfer case when the driveline may be bound up or there's pressure against the tires. If that's the case, there's a good chance you may not be able to even shift the transfer case because of the pressure that's on the driveline. Whenever you are about to hit the trail or obstacle and need to shift into four low, first stop the vehicle completely and shift the transmission into neutral, then shift the four wheel drive into four low. Sometimes using a bit of force or if it's electronic, just wait until you either hear the four wheel drive system engage or the dash light indicates you're in four low and then go. Sometimes if the four low hasn't been engaged in a hot minute, then it might take a little extra finesse to get the transfer case into four low by slightly rocking the vehicle or slowly driving in reverse for about a full tire rotation and then maybe forwards for another two or three tire rotations or so just before the system engages. Just make sure and be 100% confident you're in four low before proceeding as to not shock the driveline once there is substantial pressure on it after you're already into the obstacle. Doing that will sometimes lead to breaking something and either causing an expensive repair bill or leaving you stranded out on the trails. So just make sure to take your time, stop completely, and verify you're engaged in four low before hitting the obstacle. Another excellent use of four low is when you need to pull somebody out of a stuck situation and need the extra torque from the engine. Just like a 10 speed bicycle or a motorcycle, the lower the gear is, the easier it is for you to pedal or the engine is to work. So whenever you're in a situation where you know you're going to need as much power out of the engine as possible, make sure you're in four low. There are a couple of off-road situations where it requires good judgment as to whether to be in four low or four high. One of them being steep hills. Sometimes a really steep incline needs a lot of momentum to get all the way up to the top without losing traction halfway up the hill due to not carrying enough speed before you even get to the base of the hill. If that's the case and speed is going to be your best friend, then shift into four high and let her fly and don't let up until you've crested the top of the hill. Just make sure and know what's on the other side or on top of the hill first before hitting it. If you've ever seen the crazy high horsepower sand rails hit the hills in the dunes, then that's basically what you have to do on the bigger, steeper hills. On the contrary though, going downhill, it's best to use four low as the engine is going to be your brakes and not so much the use of your actual brake. On a steep decline, using too much of your brakes will cause them to heat up to sometimes to the point where they'll get so hot that they won't even work anymore. And if you're not in four low, well, then there's nothing else stopping you from a potential plunge to the bottom of the depths of that hill where you might be meeting your maker and nobody wants that. The other conditional situation is in the mud. Thick, gooey mud with a hard bottom that's not too deep and four low would just be fine. 
But if you need to clean out your tires at any point and really need a lot of wheel speed, then four high might be the way to go. If your engine and axle gearing gives you enough power to spin the large heavy tires at a speed where they'll clean out. Sometimes the mud just might be too thick and the engine isn't powerful enough to really spin the tires, so you may end up in four low and then shifting the transmission up a gear or two to help get that wheel speed you're looking for. See, the thing is with mud is that there are a lot of different variables that come into play when trying to get through it. Is it thick, heavy mud? Is there a hard bottom to latch onto? Is it watery and sloppy mud with no bottom? Is it virtually quicksand and your buddies spend five hours getting you unstuck because you buried the Anthem power wagon at Gay Beach in Upper Michigan so bad that at one point we literally thought we were gonna have to leave it there. But that's a whole nother story for another time. Now, there are a few other things to be cautious of when using four low that could also cause some catastrophic damage, like blowing up your engine. The cause and effect of using a lower gear is that you're gonna be working your engine in a higher RPM range and in hard throttle situations, it's much easier for the engine to go beyond that threshold of where those RPMs are supposed to go. Many or most newer vehicles have a built-in RPM limiter, which is most commonly referred to as a rev limiter, so that the engine doesn't go beyond its working capacity. That doesn't mean that the rev limiter is a sure stop way of preventing you from blowing it to pieces, but it usually helps. So just make sure and be aware of your engine's safe operating RPM range. Another disadvantage to having the advantage of low range gear is that because the engine output power is basically multiplied, the forces on the drivetrain will also be multiplied and will be much more greater than when using four high. Meaning if you get one of your tires jammed up into a spot and hit the gas too hard, there's a good chance you're gonna find the weak spot in your drivetrain and something's gonna break. So using forward low also means practicing a little bit more finesse with the throttle as well. So if you are just getting started in the sport of off-roading or are new to a selectable four-wheel drive system, it really all just boils down to getting some seat time to get to know your vehicle, how to use it, and how to get the most control and capabilities out of it as possible. Best way to do that is to find a small group of experienced off-roading friends and go out with them as much as possible to practice using your vehicle in a variety of different situations first before going off the deep end and, well, trying to walk before you can even crawl. See what I did there? Crawl. You got it, right, Zach? Doing that will be detrimental to your future off-roading success and, well, will save you from many stucks and embarrassments for years to come. But what we really want to hear from you guys is what other types of situations would you use for low in or have used for low in? Or even if you guys have any really good stories about getting stuck, well, make sure and let us know in the comments below. Or even if you guys do have any other questions about using for low, just let us know. Other than that, guys, if you like today's video, make sure and hit that thumbs up and that subscribe button. Also, don't forget, wheels, tires, suspension, and accessories for your off-road vehicle can all be found right on our website at trailbuiltoffroad.com. And guys, as always, we appreciate all of you for watching and all of your support. I'm Josh from Trailbuilt, and we'll see you guys out on the trails.